Spiders are among the most feared and persecuted groups of invertebrates on our planet. But one species stands out above the rest as being perhaps the most infamous spider on Earth, the black widow spider. For decades, the iconic appearance and potential danger of this species has caused it to become pretty ingrained in pop culture. And like so many common and potentially dangerous species, there is a vast amount of misinformation circulating about these spiders. My name is Ben Zeno, and my mission is to inspire you to learn about and conserve the amazing wildlife that's just waiting to be discovered all around us. Now, widows are crevice dwelling spiders, so we're gonna be flipping cover objects, looking under bark and inside of rotten logs to try and track down one of these elusive but beautiful arachnids. Now, I think I just saw the spider actually retreat into its web. Oh, there it goes, there it goes, okay. Gosh, it's so fast. Okay, it's down. No, 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 yes. Ha, 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 I got it. Oh, that's awesome. It is gonna sit a little still for us. I'm not sure exactly which species it is, but I'm pretty confident that this is in the genus Aglinopsis. The common name from their group, the funnel weaver spiders, comes from the fact that, because as you can see, its webbing is indeed in the shape of a funnel. Now that funnel is critically important to the funnel weaver's hunting strategy. It's actually not sticky. That funnel is just to direct flying prey down into the center of the web, so it very much acts like a funnel trap for invertebrates, and that is the primary prey of the species. Now, based on the clubbing that I'm seeing on these pedipalps, I think that this is a male Aglinopsis. These are commonly misidentified as brown recluse spiders. This spider, you can see, does not have a violin on the head. In the other group of spiders, these are commonly confused for are the wolf spiders. But one easy way to tell them apart is that a lot of our nursery web spiders have these really enlarged spinnerets and you can see that on this individual. So this is not the species we're looking for, but that is exactly the kind of habitat that I expect to find widows in. So we'll keep looking in these little cracks and crevices and seeing if we can find our widow. But that is a really neat little spider and actually the first Aglinopsis I think that I've ever gotten in hand. All right, let's get back in this funnel. Bye, buddy. What's under here? Nothing, there's a beetle. I can see you. Kind of, can my camera though? I'm not gonna break your bark. Oh shoot, look at that. <laughs> Absolute blueberry. That is a beautiful widow. Hold on, let me set her back down for a second, grab a capture container and see if we can get her jarred up. I just don't wanna freak her out too bad here. Yeah, perfect. Oh, wow. Gosh, she's a stunner. So we'll get her back in the woods somewhere where she feels nice and safe and she doesn't get too hot. And we're gonna be talking today about three tips for safely identifying black widow spiders. So my first ID tip is you can look for that red hourglass. And that's probably the most famous identifier of the black widow spider. Anytime we see black widows in popular media, you see that hourglass symbol associated with it. But this ties directly into my second identification tip, which is that that red hourglass is actually on the ventral side of the abdomen, not the dorsal side. So if you're looking at the abdomen from behind, like I am right now, you are not gonna see the hourglass. It's going to be completely jet black, but very round like a blueberry. And also some individuals will have red markings on the dorsal side of their abdomen. And this individual actually does have one of those. She has a single red dot right above the spinnerets. Now, the other really useful thing about identifying cobweb spiders is it's in the name of their group, but they make cobwebs. They don't make these really organized webs with spokes and a focal point like maybe an orb weaver would. And so my third identification tip is actually to look for those cobwebs when trying to figure out if something could be a widow spider. If you see a spider, even if it has a similar body shape to a cobweb spider that is in a web with any kind of organized structure or a very large web, almost certainly it's not going to be a widow. And that is how they make a living in your house or in nature, is that these spiders can live in these really tight, confined places where other arachnids simply cannot get to. And that's also part of why they have this really potent venom. So while an orb weaver is gonna be eating lots of winged insects, of course, widow spiders were trapping things like beetles that have this really thick, 
chitinous armor, and they might be far stronger physically than some of the winged insects or other spiders eat. And so widows need that really potent venom to be able to safely capture these prey items in their tiny little webs because they don't have much real estate to work with at all. Okay, so how dangerous are black widow spiders really? Well, it's a complicated answer because everyone is going to have a slightly different reaction to the venom of this species, but it is medically significant and it's a pretty potent neurotoxin. So black widow spider venom contains compounds called alpha latrotoxins, and these latrotoxins can cause a variety of pretty severe symptoms in humans. The most common symptom is going to be pain at the site of the bite, so a very local symptom, but there can be systemic symptoms as well if you have a negative reaction to those latrotoxins. Sometimes full system reactions can include muscle spasms and contractions, nausea, vomiting, headaches, a variety of more serious symptoms that might hint that you need medical attention. But not everyone is going to have that severe of a reaction to the bite of the black widow. However, I do still recommend seeking medical attention if you think you have been bitten by a black widow spider just in case you do have that kind of system-wide reaction, but it is rarely fatal and it is not as dangerous as is often portrayed in popular media. Now, I really wanna make it clear that black widow spiders are an arachnid that is to be respected, but not an arachnid that you need to be scared of. And so I'm gonna try something that I never thought I was going to do. I'm going to see if this spider will just crawl across my fingers. All right, so here she comes down the stick. Here's my fingers. Yep, there she goes. Just exploring her terrain. My fingers are just a part of her terrain now. Now the question is, do I want to take the next step and just let her crawl over my hand? And I think this individual would cooperate in doing so. I would rather not get bit by a black widow spider if I can help it, but I really truly do believe that this is a species whose bark is far worse than its bite. I think it has a horrible reputation, but is not as dangerous or as aggressive as people say. And if I really believe that, then I will let this animal crawl on my hand. It's a black widow spider crawling on me right now. This has been an amazing experience. This is wild. Here's your sneak peek at the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.